What's up you guys, it's Matt Allen here with the Allen team. Today's video, we're gonna talk about new construction sales and five things you probably didn't know when you step into that sales office. Stay tuned. So you've looked at a lot of resale properties and just not seeing what you're looking for. New construction might be the answer for you. We see a lot of our customers don't want to even get into the bidding wars and things that are happening right now. Want to choose a lot of their fixtures, their appliances, their paint colors. I get it. Um, but a lot of times people walk in on the weekends off the street with those fancy signs and those beautiful model centers you really don't know what they're getting into. Um, today's video, we're gonna just talk about five things to keep in mind when you do purchase a new construction home. Um, keeping in mind, you always wanna have representation from a, an agent. I know agents say that all the time, but um, over the last few weeks, actually, um, our team has helped several buyers with some challenges that they've had with purchasing new construction. So always get that agent to register you um, they're able to, to overcome a lot of obstacles that may come up. So without further ado, I'm going to go through that list, starting with number one. When you walk into a new sales center, you essentially have two choices when purchasing new construction. You have their quick move-in homes that are already ready for you to move into, typically move into those 30 to 45 days. The other option is to build on a lot. So you'd pick the lot out, choose the house that you want, and then choose every fixture, every um, appliance, everything in the house you would, you would consider buying. Either choice is a good choice, depending on what your needs are. If you need to move into a house quickly, you know, the, the move-in ready houses or the quick move-in homes would be a, a logical choice for you. A lot of people think that with those type of homes, you can't change anything. And that's not always the case. There is some negotiation there. Most buyers don't know that. Um, there's negotiation in price. There's negotiation in some of the things they can change. It really all depends on the builder uh, to see what, what actually they're willing to do. I've had several builders that'll come in and change paint color. They'll add summer kitchens. Uh, they'll change out. I had one where they changed out the entire bathroom. Um, so that is possible. It just really depends on the builder. Number two has to do with home inspections on your house when it's almost ready to be completed. Um, most builders will allow you to do what's called an initial walkthrough inspection on the house. That's where they give you the tape let you go to town on blemishes, anything that's the paint's not right or uh, a door's not working right. You know, it's more cosmetic type of things. Some builders, and this is where you really need an agent to look through your contract uh, to make sure that you are allowed to have a professional home inspector come in. The reason that's so important is because they're looking at things that aren't cosmetic. Your things like your, your systems, your AC, your roof, making sure that everything was done to code and that it's been done properly and, and hooked up correctly. Um, some builders take the stance of, no, we don't want a home inspector to come in uh, because you have a year warranty on the property, <clears throat> or they just cause extra work, unneeded work, because they have to justify their time and expense. I don't necessarily buy that. I think it's important to have a home inspection, uh, whether it's resale or new construction. So make sure you check your contract to make sure that's something that is allowed. Number three, we're almost there. We're almost halfway through. This one's an important one. So if you get anything out of this, this might be the most important. You really need to review your contract at the time you're signing it. 99% of builders, in fact, every builder I've ever worked with, does not allow for an appraisal contingency in the contract. So what that means is 
once your financing is in place, your finance company is only going to lend on the appraised value of the property, meaning what it's worth. They're only going to give you whatever percentage you're looking for towards that purchase price. If for some reason your house does not appraise for what you have it under contract for, you are going to be responsible for the difference. That's a pretty important thing to know. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. I had one this year that underappraised. One of the major things that cause underappraisals is overimprovement of a property. What I mean by that is going into that upgrade center and picking every upgrade you could possibly imagine to overimprove the house to the point where it's it costs more to build than what the value of the surrounding homes are. So be very careful with that. That's an important point. Number four has to also do with lending. When you walk into that sales office, they prefer you to use their approved lender. A lot of times they own that lending institution as well, and it could offer potential benefits to you to use that particular lender. In some circumstances though, uh, it may not. You may have a better rate with your own bank or your own mortgage company that you're preferring to use, and they try to entice you with uh, paying all of your closing costs. Resale is a little different than new construction. In new construction, you're typically paying all of the closing costs except for uh, commissions. With resale, it's a little different. Um, you're, you're sharing in those, those closing costs. Um, so they use that as, as an incentive for you to use their preferred lender, but you really have to look at apples to apples. So you look at the interest rate, you look at your payment per month. So if you're using your own preferred lender and are saving $100 a month in, in mortgage interest payment versus not paying the closing costs uh, or paying the closing costs and using um, your preferred lender, it might work out over the long run that you're saving more money getting the better interest rate, if that makes sense to you. So keep that in mind. Take a look at all of the information so you're, you're doing an informed decision on that. Number four has to do with getting to the finish line. At this point in the process, you just want to move into your brand new house. And I get that. I understand that's something that we're all hoping you, you get to that finish line as well. But you have to be careful when you're doing your final walkthrough inspection that things are completed. You need to review your contract at that point to make sure that everything that was included in this, the initial offer is included in the house. We just had one recently uh, where they forgot to put shutters on the front window. Um, you paid for that, so it's something you are entitled to and should be on the house. Some builders will say, okay, well, we'll go ahead and put that in after the fact. It's okay, but it's not optimal. You really wanna to try to get everything done before you sign on that dotted line and hand them a bunch of money. Um, so keep that in mind, look through everything, make sure the paint is right, make sure all the doors are open on that final walkthrough, they, they work right, there's no squeakiness, or you know, there's just a, a, a multitude of things that, that you need to check. Turning on all the appliances, make sure they work. Open every drawer in the kitchen. Um, I just had one the other day where I pulled out the drawer and the whole drawer fell out. So keep an eye on those things. Now is the time to be the pickiest. Even though you want to move in, even if it takes an extra day, take the time to do that. I got one bonus for you. When you go into the sales center, don't be afraid to ask for more than you think they're going to accept. You could be very well surprised. It could be the last home in the neighborhood and they just need to get it sold. So if that summer kitchen is something you really want or you want a new tile in that bathroom or whatever it might be, don't be afraid to ask or have an agent ask on your behalf, which makes it a lot easier. We don't mind asking. Um, so that's my bonus. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, you know, definitely like it, subscribe to it, and do all those fun things. Check out some of my other videos. I'm just starting to get into the series, so hopefully you find this informative. If you are in Central Florida and need a, a good agent that's been around since 2002,
give me a call, send me a text message. I'm very easy to get a hold of. Thanks again. Enjoy the day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.